Hello everyone, I am Karan Masru. Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss solution of the problem that is smallest window in a string containing all the characters of another string. First of all, let us start by understanding the question. Question says that given two strings capital S and capital P, find the smallest window. Window means basically a substring in the string capital S consisting of all the characters including duplicates of string P. Return minus one in case there is no such window present. In case there are multiple such windows of same length, return the one with the least starting index. Note all the characters are in lowercase alphabets. So basically what they are trying to say is, suppose we are given two strings S and P, then out of all the substrings in S which contains all the characters of P, we need to return the smallest length substring. Okay. Now what does containing all the characters of P means? It means that even considering the duplicates, all those characters must be present in the substring which we are considering of string S. So for example, P is A, A, B, B and S is X, Y, A, P, Q, B, B, C, A, D, right? Now we need a substring which contains at least two times A and at least two times B. What does it say? The duplicate should also, including duplicates, we need to consider the count. So we need a substring in string S which has at least two A's and at least two B's. So basically, a substring in S should contain all the characters in P. There can be other extra characters in the substring which we are considering. And the length of such substring should be smallest. Out of all such substrings, we need to find the smallest length substrings. Also, the order of characters does not matter. In S, in the substring, the characters of P can be present in any order. Okay. So now, does this substring contain all the characters of P? Are there two A's and two B's? Yes, there are two A's and two B's. But is this the smallest length? No. Can we reduce it till here? Yes. Can we reduce it further? Yes. Can we reduce it further? Yes. So my substring from year to year will contain two A's and two B's. Can we reduce it even further? No. So my answer would be what? In this case, my answer would be A, P, Q, B, B, C, A. This is the smallest length substring which contains all the characters of P. In case there is no such substring which contains all the characters of P, in that case we will return minus one. Now let's read further. So if we look at the first example, the first example S is time to practice and P is TOC. The output is TOPRSC. This is the smallest length substring which contains T, O and C. Can we see T? Yes, O and C as well. So this is the smallest substring and we will return it, right? And similarly, you can look at the second example. Uh, if we look at the task, we need to complete this function which takes two strings S and P as input and returns the smallest window in the string S, smallest substring of string S, having all the characters of string P. In case there are multiple such windows of same length, return the one with the least starting index. So suppose there is a, a substring in S from second index to fifth index and there is a substring from 10th index to 13th index. Both of them are of same length and contains all the characters of P. But we will return the uh, one from second index to fifth index because it has lower starting index. The expected time complexity is length of the string S and expected auxiliary space is length of string P. The constraints are given here. So now if we think about solving this problem, then see what can be one simple approach for all the substring. We will, what we will do is we will maintain the count of all the characters from A to Z in string S and we will pre-process the count of all the characters of string P in another array. And for all the substrings in S, we will check whether their counting can match such that the all the characters of P are present in S. So basically what I can do is see suppose I take two arrays C1 of size 26 and C2 of size 26 where uh, zero index will represent count of A in a substring, first index will represent count of B in a substring and so on. 25th index will represent count of Z in a substring. C2 will be used for string P and C1 would be used for string S. Then what I can do first of all I can traverse a string P suppose the length of string P is M okay. Then what I can do is I can traverse string P and increment the counts. So I can say for i equals to 0 to m minus 1, 
c2 of p of i minus 97 plus plus right because these are character values they will return their ascii values i am doing minus 97 to get the respective index from 0 to 25 so i have got the count of characters of string p now for each substring in s i need to check whether that can whether all the characters of p are present in that substring of s so what i can do is suppose starting index is i and ending index is j for, for all the different substrings then for i equals to 0 to n minus 1 where n is the length of string s suppose so the length of string s is n then and what would be my ending index so j would be i to n minus 1 so i will represent uh, starting index j will represent ending index now before increasing the counts what i need to do i need to make c1 of all the indexes as 0 so c1 of k would be equal to 0 well k will range from 0 to 25 then at each point what i'll do is see for a fixed value of i j will keep increasing so the ending index will keep increasing so i need to increment its count so i will say c1 of s of j minus 97 plus plus and what i'll do at each point suppose i call a function check c1 and c2 which will basically tell me after checking the array c1 and c2 where c1 represents the counts of characters in the substring s1 uh, substring of s starting from index i to j and c2 represents the count of characters in the string p so this check function will tell me whether all the characters of p are present in uh, this substring or not so i'll call this function check and if it returns true what i'll do is answer equals to minimum of answer comma j minus i plus 1 because this substring length is j minus i plus 1 or here we do not need to store the length of the smallest substring we need to return that substring itself so instead of storing this length what i'll do is i'll check whether this length is less than answer then i'll take one answer string and store this substring starting from i index to j index because here we do not need to return length we need to return the substring itself okay but what is the issue here here there are two for loops and so the time complexity will be big o of n square and we need to think about something efficient the expected time complexity is big o of length of string s suppose the length of string s is n then expected time complexity is big o of n so what we can do here see here we can use the two pointers method so what i'll do is suppose this is my string s okay this is my uh, one pointer uh, pointing at index l and another pointer pointing at index r so i am considering this substring at present so what i'll do is i'll call the check function for this substring right i'll maintain c1 and c2 same way so c1 will represent the count of characters of substring of string s and c2 will represent count of characters of string p okay so what i'll do suppose i'm using two pointers and at a given point of time my one pointer is pointing at index l and another pointer is pointing at index r and i'm considering this substring so i'll call the check function and see whether all the characters of p are present in this or not if they are not present i'll keep incrementing r and i'll keep adding new characters if they are present then i'll keep decrementing l until it satisfies the condition why because i need the smallest length so i'll de keep decreasing it until possible for example if we look at this then and we will start with l equals to r equals to 0 and we will end well r becomes n at this point we will terminate our operation so suppose s is equals to x y a p q b b c a and d okay and p is a a b b now what i'll do l is here and r is here right now i'll keep incrementing r until i do not get all the characters of string p so when will be the first time when i'll get it this would be the first time because i need 2a and 2b here will be 2a and 2b until then check function will keep re uh, returning false so i'll keep increasing the length of my substring now so this would be my initial answer but here i have got all the characters of p 
So now what I'll do is I'll try to decrease this substring and check whether it still satisfies the given condition. It means that after decreasing, does it still contain all the characters of P? So I'll decrease it and I'll make it this much. It still contains all the characters of P. There are two A's and two B's. I'll still decrement it. I'll still decrement it, but this substring will not contain starting from P and ending at A. This will not contain all the characters of P. So what I'll do at each point when I'm decreasing, I'll compare that with the answer. So what will happen? This would be stored as my answer because initially this substring was my answer. But now I have got a substring of smaller length. So my answer would be what? A, P, Q, B, B, C, A. And then my L will increase and I'll consider the substring. A, uh, this is X, Y. A, P, Q, B, B, C, A, D. So after this substring, I'll again increment the L and then my substring would become this, but this does not contain all the characters of P. So now I'll increment R. So my R will become this. This also don't, does not contain all the characters of P. Then R will become N and we will terminate the process. Now, if we look at the time complexity R, our uh, variables L and R, the two pointers will loop over all the indexes at max once. They will not repeat again. So suppose my L is at this index, it will not again come back. And same for R, both of them will keep moving towards right. So both of the indexes will traverse all the indexes at max once. So there will be basically two for loops used. So we can say that the time complexity is big of n. And at each point, whenever our check condition returns true, we will, uh, if uh, that substring length is less than our answer length, then we will uh, store that substring in our answer. Now let's look at its actual code. So now if we look at the actual implementation, then I have taken one string answer. I have taken some variables C1 to represent the count of characters of a substring of string S, which we are, which we will be considering. C2 will store the count of characters of string P and answer L and answer R would represent the starting and ending index of the smallest substring which contains all the characters of P and which will be our answer. Okay, so they, those are used for that and L and R would be used for traversing using two pointers. Okay, L would represent the starting index and R would represent the ending index of any substring which will be traversing at any given point of time. Initially, I will make all of them as zeros. I will take N as size of string S and M as size of string P and I will traverse the string P and store its count in array C. Okay, now let's go for the so now if we look further, I have started with L equals to R equals to zero and using the two pointers method at each point, what we will do, we will increment R. So I have made a for loop using R and at each point we are considering Rth index in our substring. So I'll increment the count of the character at Rth index. Now while this check condition is true, what we will do, first we will assign the answer variables and then we will increment the value of R. So suppose for this substring, this is L and this is R and this contains all the characters of string P. This check function returns true. We will look at the check function also. Then now what we will do, we will check for smaller substring. So we will uh, increment R, uh, sorry, increment L. So L will become L plus one, then L plus two until it keeps containing all the characters of string P. Whenever the condition becomes false, we will stop the L and again start incrementing R so that we can get the remaining characters. So while check function returns true, first of all, if answer underscore L is equals to minus one, which means that we have initialized them as minus one. So if it is still minus one, it means that we haven't got any valid answer still yet. So we will say answer underscore L as L and answer underscore R as R. Else, if we have got a valid answer first, we will check the length. So if answer underscore R minus answer underscore L plus one, the answer we have got before is greater than the current substring, which satisfies this condition. Then we need the smallest substring, so we will consider it. So we will uh, store the new indexes of L and R. Then we will increment the L, so we will decrement the count of uh, characters stored at Lth index. Because if my L goes from here and I'm considering this substring, then I have to decrement the count of this character. So I'll decrement it and increase my value of L and we'll keep doing this. After we come out, if answer underscore L is still minus one, it means we have not got any valid answer. So answer would be equal to minus one. Otherwise, 
we will take the substring starting from index answer underscore l and its length would be answer underscore r minus answer underscore l plus one that is its length so this substring we will get in our answer and we will finally return that variable what would be the time complexity time complexity would be big o of n where n is the length of the string s because as i said here there is l and r but both of them will loop over each index at max once okay and uh, uh, this check function would uh, have a loop of size 26 but that is a constant we can ignore it so this would be the time complexity so what would be the auxiliary space if we look at the auxiliary space so uh, we have taken two arrays of size 26 so i can say big o of 26 plus this answer string will take some length now the length of answer string can be at max the length of string s why because suppose my string p is a b and my string s is a p q r x y and b then i need to take this whole substring in order to satisfy this condition so the max would be n so i can still say it as big o of n because 26 is constant now let's look at this check function so now if you look at the check function so check function basically tells that for a given substring whether that substring contains all the characters of string p or not now c1 contains all the characters of the substring of string s which we are considering and c2 contains the count of all the characters of string p right so basically for all the indexes the count of that character in s should be greater than p right it can be even more at times because suppose i have x a b this is my string s and my string p is a b so my uh, i need to consider this whole string now there is count of x in string p is zero and count of x here is one so it should for each character the count in s should be greater than or equal to the count of same character in p that's all so for any index what i'll do is i'll initialize flag variable as true and for any index if count of character in substring of string s is less than that of a string p i'll immediately make flag variable as false and break and then finally i'll return the flag variable which will be either true or false depending upon the condition now let's submit this code so let's submit it so we have solved this problem successfully i hope you have understood this solution completely thank you